So let's mix up our workout routine. Jewelry bars are a new frontier in jewelry making where your customer is able to make their own personalized piece of jewelry. Today we're going to be talking about jewelry bars. We'll talk about what they are exactly, how to prepare one, make a successful jewelry bar behind the scenes, and how to ensure that your customers are getting the most out of their jewelry bar experience. We'll also talk about the perfect venues to host a jewelry bar. So what is a jewelry bar exactly? Well, a jewelry bar is like a jewelry buffet. What it is is it's an assortment of pendants and your customers are able to shop from this curated collection that you've prepared and make their own jewelry. It's very hands-on and the customer does all the work. Um, behind the scenes, we'll be making a lot of things that pull the whole concept together. We'll need parts like chain necklaces and bangle bracelets, and those are the foundation pieces that your customer will build off of. Then we'll be making a lot of pendants and pulling together some really beautiful elements for your customers to choose. Um, then after that, we'll talk about containers and how to help every, uh, make the process easier and organize the whole system so that it runs really well. So let's get started with the chain necklaces. The chain necklaces are the foundation piece, as you can see in some of the samples, of the necklaces that your customer will be making. They add what they like, but what they need is a necklace to start. So we'll be making those behind the scenes. Um, what I did for my chain necklace is I bought a huge spool of chain, good quality chain, about 100 meters of it, and I made lots and lots of necklaces. What I did was I cut a 24 inch uh, length of chain. Now that's a pretty classic length. It's pretty flattering on everyone But what I do is I always have extra chain and tools at all my jewelry bars so that if someone wanted a different necklace length I can accommodate Then to make your chain you're going to add a lobster clasp to one end of the chain with a tw with a four millimeter jump ring This is just a little guy And it does the deed and we're going to add the lobster clasp to one end Whenever I'm making a lot of chain necklaces, I like to do it kind of an assembly line where I cut all my chain, I open all my jump rings, I close all my jump rings and add the clasp. So that's one end of your uh, finished chain. Then, and this is the important one, on the other end you're gonna add a five millimeter jump ring. Oops. The reason that this is so important is because this ring is gonna finish the clasp it needs to be easy to work for your customers, but more importantly, it needs to be small enough where all the pendants that we're gonna be making after this point are able to slip over the ring. There we go. So five millimeter jump rings will slip through the pendants that we're gonna make. Later on when we make our pendants, we're gonna be using a larger ring. This way your customer can slide on pendants and add what they like, design, take away, and they don't need tools, and they don't need your help if they don't want it. So this is what makes it work so well. Another thing that I use for my jewelry bars are these um, bangle bracelets. These have been really popular lately and I love the look. I had to look pretty hard to find um, bracelets where you don't need tools to open and close them. These just open and hook. I chose these, again, so that my customers didn't need tools and didn't need my help if they didn't want. This is a sample bracelet using that bangle. It's fun, you can load on as much as you want or as little and it still looks really good. Another alternative for the bangle bracelet is to make your own. This is a bracelet jig and when you add the pegs, you can take a length of wire around the jig Hook the wire around the pegs to make a loop closure. Then cut your wire and hammer uh, the bangle to harden it. That's another great element, and then it's handmade, which is even better. Okay, so those are your foundations. I start by making um, 50 chains to get going. That was the first time um, at the craft fair that I did it, and I almost sold out, so that was a good number. I also bring my um, bangle bracelets. Um, a word about finishes, I choose to use antique brass elements and antique silver elements only because I didn't want too many choices. So I offer those, but you don't have to. You could do rose gold or copper or um, gold plate. You could even do a high-end jewelry bar using sterling silver and gold fill elements. That'd be pretty wonderful too. So those are your foundation pieces that your customers will build off of. Now we get to talk about pendants and that's the fun part. The first thing that I um, 
look for when I'm choosing pendants are really pretty charms. I like to um, choose charms from different suppliers so that I have a different finish and so that the whole collection doesn't look one note. I once saw a jewelry bar um, that had all the same size, same colored pendants, little charms. It was really neat for what it was, but I wanted something that was more diverse. So I look for different um, charms from different places. I don't get these at the craft store. Instead, I look for suppliers where I can buy a large lot. That way I can get a bulk discount and I can widen my price margin, my profit margin. Um, so that's what I start with. And when I get my charms, I buy um, jump rings to turn them into pendants. I use 10 millimeter jump rings for all of my pendants. Um, they slip through the, the ring of the charm, I close them, and then, like we talked about earlier, they're able to slip over the ring on my chain necklace. So everything can go on. Another thing that I like to make for pendants are beaded pendants. And a beaded pendant, very simply, is a bead on a head pin, and I like to use ball head pins for just that little, that little element of um, style there. And I make a simple wrapped loop and turn a bead into a beaded pendant. Again, I buy my head pins in crazy bulk because you're making so many. What's really nice about um, beaded pendants is that you've got so many options. I keep an eye on the really beautiful beads that are out there. I keep an eye out for really pretty beads. I look for beads on sale. Um, something that's interesting and adds a pop of color uh, to the necklace. When I make the beaded pendants, I trim it very close and then I crimp it closed because you don't want anything catching on a sweater or uh, being kind of a menace. That's about the last thing you want. So there's a beaded pendant. Um, I like to mix up the beads that I use. I like to use natural elements because it plays off of the metal so well. What's really exciting about this whole uh, jewelry bar experience is that it's fun and there's a lot of cool things to look at and to choose. Um, some of the things that I like to add along with the beaded pendants um, are things like little vials of, um, this is a bank note, this is like a receipt from a bank note and I just wrapped it up like a little message in a bottle and put it in a little vial. Um, lockets, vintage lockets are so popular, those always go. And um, then I also think of the kids too because kids are really attracted to, to jewelry bars and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but I put in little glitter and candy inside, inside vials too. Um, keep an eye out for like cast offs or estate jewelry. Um, a whole box of jewelry at a garage sale usually doesn't have a lot of value if it's broken or outdated, but it's perfect for something like this. Um, I can take a broken earring and use the pendant and turn it into a really beautiful element for um, the jewelry bar, and people love it. It's ephemeral, it's vintage, and it adds a really cool element to the whole piece. These are uh, skeleton keys, and those are so popular every single time. They just have kind of a goth look to it, but they're also classic and kind of romantic, too. Um, I don't even mind if something's very personal. Um, these are those, um, those charms that um, grandmas would collect of their uh, grandchildren and having charms with their names and birth dates on them. I don't know any of these kids, but it really doesn't matter because they're cute charms. I also like to add crystals, again, because it plays off of the metal that you, that are, um, there's so many metal elements in, the, in a jewelry bar, so the crystal is a nice um, kind of blingy note. Um, another fun one to add are tassels, and tassels are really simple to make. What you'll do is you're going to take um, four inch lengths of your favorite yarn or ribbon. This is a silk ribbon from India, it comes off of uh, recycled saris, and I just cut four inch lengths and thread them through our 10 millimeter jump ring. Then with about six inches of wire, I wrap the ribbon very close to the top and make a tassel. I really like it because it adds length and a nice soft element to the piece. There's so many different options of what you can add and what you can uh, put together. Everyone's creations are different. And that's what's so fun and exciting about a jewelry bar is your customers. Um, also, if you were to have this out, you're gonna attract a lot of kids. The first time I did a jewelry bar, I was at a craft market and I had a ton of kids that were interested in it. They'd been shopping all day and look at it, it's like a candy shop. So kids pick things up, um, they put things in the wrong compartments. So just be, be 
patient and understand um, that they're having a lot of fun. And remember how you were at age eight too. Um, I've never had anyone break anything, pretty interestingly. So let people put together what they like and let them explore. This is why we like jewelry making so much and it's really introducing people to jewelry making in a really um, approachable kind of way. So kids love this. Um, so that's how the jewelry bar works. It's what goes into the behind the scenes before the jewelry bar, and it goes in. And we've talked about what makes such a uh, successful jewelry bar. So where do you have a jewelry bar? Well. I started by having it at my craft booth. Um, I felt like I needed a little bit more traffic. I wanted to open up so that I had um, an attraction. The more people in your booth, the more time they're there, the more money you're making, the more things you're selling. So I, I offered a jewelry bar so that I would have um, a new clientele who was able to come and hang out. Um, uh, one thing that's really um, important is that you're very clear with uh, your customer because this is so overwhelming, you want to make it as simple as possible. Things like pricing would be very overwhelming if you didn't have it organized. What I do for pricing is I price all the pendants in the tray, little stickers on either side so that you can see wherever you're at how much something is. Then I charge a flat fee for chain. I've bumped up the price on chain, which are pretty inexpensive to make. But what I've done is I've padded that, and that includes all the labor, all the um, uh, costs that go into the jewelry bar. So I've added that to the ch I've added that to the chain price. So then, if someone wants a longer chain or some custom work done, I don't charge them for 15 minutes of labor. It's already included in the chain price. So that's how I price it, and that makes it really easy. So that would be something to keep in mind um, as you have your jewelry bar at a craft show. But also, I think my favorite venue for a jewelry bar is a trunk show. I open up my house every year at Christmas, and now the dining room is filled with the jewelry bar, and it is the fun place to be. Um, my customers come, they sit, they enjoy themselves, Groups of friends hang out and they put together a necklace. It's, it's the place to be. Um, so I think that's a, a really easy one, but then you can also take this show on the road and you can do a home party where a friend uh, will host her girlfriends and you come in with all the supplies and everything needed so that everyone can make a necklace and then make a necklace for their daughter and then make a necklace for their friend. And it ends up being a really fun interactive night where you've done all the work beforehand and then your customers can enjoy the work at the time. Um, to do a trunk show like that, I would just give uh, the hostess some nice uh, free jewelry and then you'll be able to sell probably a lot of necklaces this way and it's fun all around. That's what's so neat about jewelry bars. They're fun for you, they're fun for your customers, and you're introducing someone to jewelry making.